don't engage alone. We do this together. Somebody clip this one. Welcome to Justice League Rewatch. I'm Jared. I'm here with Nick from the Phoenix Press, and I'm feeling very gray from this episode. Oh, Jared, you are really quite the Ultraman, aren't you? Yeah, it's. I'm glad you brought that up because here's the thing. So we're talking about the episode Ultimatum, which okay, I got to bring this up. This whole episode seems to me like an image comics versus the traditional DC comics episode uh, like thing here because th this group is clearly inspired by the young bloods with the whole merchandising merchandising thing and like how they're like the more edgy t uh, relatable superheroes. I don't know what two of them were clearly the Wonder Twins. Like two of them mm -hmm. were very odd, like. Literally, one of them turns into an element. One of them turns into an animal. They are the Wonder Twins. Well, yeah, but what what I mean is that is because remember this episode. I think that this episode was like a commentary on the image re revolution that uh, th uh, that happened in the nineties. Because you know, it's a lot of because I, I hear a lot of the language there that's like, oh, you're the edgy teenage superheroes that uh, that all the young kids love. Wait, wait. wait. Are you saying that they are teenagers with, with attitude. attitude? Yes, with attitude. Yeah. Uh, by the way, um, th th basically tune in Wednesday for the fulfillment of that pun, because that's going to be a really good one. So basically, the Justice League are teaming up with Aquaman and Superman, Wonder Woman, and uh, Batman and Aquaman. And they're teaming up and they're st st stopping this like, attacking this oil rig when they're met by the Ultimen, which are pretty much like um, basically analogies for the image comics characters, the way, the way I, I at least saw it. it, it Nick, did, it, let me ask you this to start off. Did, it, 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 did you kind of see that like analogy in there or, or, or is that just me? Uh, I, it kind of went over my head because I never actually read Youngblood. So if there is a reference in there, I wouldn't get it. So. No, but what I mean is that, and not so young blood. But what I mean is that it's like because a lot of the r r uh, rhetoric that I heard, like Maxwell Lord, yes, Maxwell Lord debuts in this episode. It's, it, you could Life say can be good, but it can be better. He better not get in the same room with Wonder Woman. But anyway, uh, <laughs> he, he he might have he might need a neck massage from Wonder Woman. But anyway, yes, thank you. But it's like the language that, that like Lord is doing to describe the team and saying, oh, yeah, th they're the team that everyone loves now because they're more relatable. On that. So I, I kind of got that. Mm -hmm. I mean, possibly, but like, I don't know, like the, the reference is vague enough because like it could apply to like really anything because like it could apply to the X-Men. It could apply to even the Justice League because like even the show was marketed heavily. It just overly merchandising the neat like like i'm not saying it isn't a young blood reference but like i haven't read it so i can't really pick up on the nuances of it but to me it's just like any over merchandise new superhero team you know because like because like the 80s and the 90s those are the x-men decades especially the 80s and to some extent the 90s uh in the 2000s um what what comics were big in the early two thousands? Like what was like top of the heap? I I can't. Well, obviously really... Batman because of uh, uh, all the stuff that he got. I would argue Justice League, but in terms of like sales, I can't really because I don't think the two thousands had like that one thing that that one killer app. If I if it did, drop it in the comments and let me know civilly. Yeah, the eighties belonged to X Men, and, and the X Men were still on fire in the nineties. Mm -hmm. Um. I don't know, like, but I will say this: 
This was a very uh, this episode featured a very like strong hailstorm. So I hope you noticed the the pun I'm doing for that because if you recognize Giganta, I, I also um, you notice how Wonder Woman was getting a bit chum long shadow. Wonder um, Shadow, anybody? No. For the love of God, no. That's like when Spider-Man comes into my stream and keeps bringing up Wonderborg. It's on that level. What? You don't you don't like you don't like Spider Marvel either? Spider Marvel? Or Captain Spider? Uh No. No. Captain Marvel should be alone in her irrelevancy. It's like they had one interaction in Endgame, and all of a sudden everyone was like, ah. "That's the way shippers work, dude." At least with the with the one that I promote, there's actual evidence going back decades. See, you are a man of culture. You believe in the good ship, so thank you. But anyway, I did notice. That. But uh, <laughs> I also I also find it interesting. You know what's kind of fu funny about this? You notice how like Bizarro and Giganta are kind of a thing. So, and Bizarro is a Wonder Woman villain, and uh, I mean, but Bizarro is a Superman villain, and Giganta is a Wonder Woman villain. So, it's kind of a, a form of evil Super Wonder. Hmm. I had to bring that in. That's, that's my tin hat thing. So, th this is also, by the way, the the debut of also Amanda Waller. This is the first time she's in the DC AU. So I was like, oh, okay, that's that's why everyone's not familiar with her. And you notice Batman's face when she goes when she calls him rich boy. Yeah, like she, we know what she's implying, and he knows what she's implying. Yeah, exactly. Also, when, do, when does my favorite scene in the entire Justice League come with Amanda Waller and Batman? That comes later. That comes later. I can't remember exactly which episode it is, but I know what you're talking about. By the way, Nick, uh, and, and here's a little piece of trivia. The uh, Ultimate bears strong resemblance to original characters created for the Super Friends show. So, hey, you're spot on there. Because Wind Dragon is basically Samurai, and he has air manipulation powers. Juice is basically Black Vulcan and, and uh, electric manipulation, which... I saw him also more of like a static shock, black lightning like character. Yeah, I was getting black lightning vibes from him for sure. Long Shadow is Apache Chief, and he has self magnification. Basically, he grows. And Downpour and Shifter were were the Wonder Twins. Yes. And by the way, speaking of one of them, and you may be wondering why did I say I'm I'm being kind of gray right now? It's because um, Sister is voiced by uh, Grey DeLuise, otherwise known as Azula from Avatar The Last Airbender, otherwise known as or, Arkham Catwoman. Or Daphne from Scoob Scooby-Doo. Like, you know, Warner Brothers definitely likes casting her in roles, let's yes. just say that. Which, hey, I'm not going to complain. She's awesome. It's like Jennifer Hale. Give me more. Okay. Um, question for you. Mm -hmm. let's, 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 like, this is a quick, quick, quick little tangent. If you could cast Grey DeLuise and Jennifer Hale to voice a character in an animated adaptation of your comic, who would they play? Jennifer Hale would be Athena. And Grey DeLuise would voice that last uh, my uh, Mira character. As long as, as long as that character doesn't crap the bed, we're good. No, she doesn't. She doesn't. She makes <laughs> others crap the bed. But anyway, but, but uh, so... What's cool about this episode is, first off, it's setting up the Cadmus arc, which Jay Heat has teased on my shows forever. It's one of the best arcs of DC television. And all right, what's kind of what's kind of interesting about this? So you find out that the Ultimen are actually clones. Yes, this is the Justice League clone saga, and I may have to title the episode Ju Justice League's Clone Saga. No, <laughs> no, no, send in the clone. <laughs> I did that like a couple episodes ago, but the th so the interesting thing about this and, and that they're breaking down. So Amanda Waller was like, no, just recycle these clones and everything. And it's, also, it, mm -hmm. you, you, you notice that she referenced, I will send in the task force. Like, yeah. Did you, yeah. Catch that? did you get that? Yeah. So what are we, some type of, type of suicide squad? There you go. <laughs> so they find so they eventually try and break out and then decide that hey we're going to be super villains right now and if you notice what's actually really cool is um 
I'm trying to get the character's name, is that Long Shadow actually becomes more of a hero and like try tries to like say, no, do you guys really w w w want to be more than what Amanda Waller made us? Let's be heroes. And th that's when he is actually invited to join the Justice League. And we have my favorite Batman Amanda Waller moment when Amanda Waller is like, he's coming with us. And then the, and, and they go, safety. And, and then all, all of the Argus agents aim their guns at the Justice League. And then the Justice League all form around Long Shadow. And Batman just smiles and goes, mine are bigger. They do realize a Flash can disarm them before they can blink, right? Well, yeah, but the Flash was not in this in this episode. Superman could. Yeah, like Superman jumping. could. But yeah, I know. I'm like... I'm like, Waller, did you really not think... Did you really think that was going to make Batman... Uh, you have, wait, wait. You have Batman, Wonder Woman, and Aquaman there. Yeah, sorry. Did you really think that was going to work out well? All right. I, th I think Amanda Waller has earned a suck at Warner Brothers. Yeah, she does. She does. When I actually, you know what? She, she has earned something different from a s s suck at Warner Brothers. Dweeb. She gets a dweeb. She gets a dweeb. So, question. Do we hmm? see Long Shadow again? I think so later on in, in in the season, I believe. Like, do they actually cure him, or is it just like... I don't think they cure him. I, I think he shows up in one more episode. Actually, yes. The, he does return, but he's not cured. Well, let me put it to, to you that way. Okay, so heroic sacrifice it is. Yes, exactly. But it's just so... that, that That's a tease slash spoiler... Stephanie Brown for the next one <laughs> for, for, for like a future episode. But again, this basically deals with the whole, like what's interesting about this episode is that I like when they start to get into like, when IPs have like clones, they start getting into like clone rights and everything like that, because bad batch kind of got into that. This go goes into that to a degree. Spider-Man goes into that. So Nick, why'd you think, think of the, the of that whole like uh theme of the show uh it's pretty good it's a well-trodden story but i i think they handled it pretty well nothing like too groundbreaking really in, when it comes to those kind of things but overall i feel like it's it they handled it pretty well it's like nothing bad nothing good groundbreaking it you know like hey i liked it you know and what did you think of amanda waller in in this uh in the, her debut episode I love Amanda Waller. Like, Amanda Waller, it's like, let me just put it this way. Um, I like Amanda Waller being, like, a larger woman. It got, it even got to the point where, like, when they when they cast, like, a thin, pretty woman in the Arrowverse, I was mad because Amanda Waller, to me, is a character that is larger than life. Mm -hmm. Literally and figuratively. So, like, Amanda Waller. They call her the being, wall. Yeah, like her being a larger woman actually to me is a part of her character. You know, like she she's a character where she's not con she's not conventionally attractive, but she looks at you and, and like she's a character that could make Batman back down. And by not the way, many people can do that. If you guys want to see something truly terrifying, look at Jay Heat's impression of Amanda Waller. He legit, you would think it's this. There's a scene in the show with Amanda Waller and Batman that is probably my favorite scene in this entire we'll show. We'll talk about that. I think I get what you're... I think I know the one you're talking about, and we'll get to that one. But by the way, also interesting, here's a piece of trivia for you. You notice that the lead characters are the exact same ones that comprise the Super Friends. The only one that's m m missing is Robin, and that's because of the Bat embargo. But otherwise... It's the freaking super friends. And the Ultimates headquarters resembles the Hall of Justice. All right, fine. I got to do it. Meanwhile, the Hall of Justice. Da -da -da -da. I wish I had that one, but I, I, actually, I have the Batman one. I don't have the... <laughs> Close enough. Close enough. But uh, so it's it, it's interesting. Uh, Aquaman's presence at the conference table is possibly referencing Aquaman being one of the founding Justice League members in mainstream comics. Because remember, he that conference table that, that that they were sitting at that's traditionally where the founders uh, that the founders sit. And, and you notice what's interesting 
Um, the the seventh chair hawk um, hawk girl uh, used is still there. Yeah. So, so it's almost like did Aquaman take over Hawk Girl's space on the Justice League? You've been replaced, Shaira. I don't think I. I don't like. I I would say there's kind of like three tiers to Justice League membership. There's like the founding members, there are senior members, and they're just like the regular members. I think Aquaman is probably in like the senior members kind of like level. In the show, yes. In the comics, he's founder. Yeah, but in this in this show, I'm just talking mm-hmm. about this show. Yeah, like he's not like uh, he's he's kind of above the rank and file, but he's not like full full on full on like founder, you know, kind of thing. Uh huh. I know it's cool. What do you think of Batman's le- little whirly helicopter? He was flying on in Aquaman's hanging on for two. I I, I I have to be honest with you. When I saw that, I actually did like laugh out loud because it was <laughs> so ridiculous. That is something that would happen in the Adam West show. Like that is like it's just it's 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 like it's like okay, uh, we need to get Batman and the Flash there, but there's no flying characters. Let's just put him in like this helicopter shot for like like three seconds. We won't explain it. The toy makers will be happy. Bam. Fun fact on the DVD commentary for the return episode, the creators lamented how much work they put into designing the, the episode this episode's whirly bat, which Batman y- used to fly into battle. They pointed out that even though the whirly bat appeared for only a few seconds, fans still hated it. <laughs> yeah because yeah, when i saw that i was like i don't remember that but toy sales will go through the roof merchandising, you know the merchandising. well the real money from the movie is made yeah exactly but in, in, in the lava men are are similar to the creatures the super friends fought in, at the same so basically this is uh, i i originally framed this as a justice league versus the uh Versus the Image Comics, but no, I'm titling this Justice League versus the Super Friends. One thing I also noticed, um, so Jared, do you remember that episode of Batman Beyond where they had like the fan, like the faux Fantastic Four characters? No, because remember, I haven't watched all of Batman Beyond. Okay, switching gears. So there is an episode of Batman Beyond <laughs> where they have these four characters Good who recovery. are very clearly an homage to the Fantastic Four, and yeah. the thing stand in. Is like this, like magma guy. Mm-hmm. His design looks a lot like these guys. I wouldn't be surprised if this is like a proto of that character because of Batman Beyond being in the future and stuff. I mean, there is an episode a few episodes ago. I didn't mention this, but the robot is the exact same robot design of the Zeta robots from the Zeta mm-hmm. Zeta crossover of Batman Beyond. Yeah, so uh, uh, it would make sense if if like if they got the idea for like how or, or, or that they changed Ben Grimm. I'm gonna call him Ben Grimm in there. By the way, uh, I, yeah. By the way, I want to commend you. That was a fantastic recovery. I love that. That that, uh, that worked really well. And uh, kind of keep this in the back of your mind when um, when we do do Batman Beyond. Bizarro's declaration before attacking Wonder Woman at the prison is likely a reference to Mighty Mouse, a superhero mouse who was known for, for singing Here I Come to Save the Day when flying into action. Oh, dear God. Like all, all this, <laughs> yeah, I'm just like, okay, wow. And um, so, so, yeah, so essentially he's invited, uh, um, Wind Dragon is invited into the Justice League. And I actually know it's l- l- long shadow, but the point the point is he's invited into the Justice League, and he and, and they basically say, "Hey, for however long you have, you can serve on the Justice League," and that's the and, and that's it. That, that's where we really leave him. And and again, we see him in one more episode. I think the Cadmus Kasm- arc, and then um, yeah, that should be the last. Not not the the last time we see him, but yeah. And by the way, Nick has DM'd me the picture of the magma guy, so I'm going to share it on the screen right now, so we can have this example. Because yes, it is spot on, and I wouldn't be surprised if again they get the same idea for the process that turned him into this guy. So from this episode, this is this is the terrific trio. That is the name <laughs> of the group and the episode of Batman Beyond. So yes, fantastic. This is a fantastic four episode. I, wow. Like they literally have threes on their chest. Like I can't wait to do Batman Beyond. You're gonna love it, boy. So uh, now let me ask you this: uh, Is it by directed way, by Josh dude, Frank? 
Is it called Fan Three Stick? By the way, so the dude is actually like he stretches, and the woman is basically missed. Oh, that works. So there you go. That's good. I like that. And they're called the Trick Trio, so it's like a fantastic. Like, yeah, it's a really good episode. Um. So, by the way, I want to bring this up. This is how many other Justice Leaguers showed up in this episode. You ready? Aztec, Adam Smasher, Booster Gold, Crimson Fox, Dove, Dr. Light, Elongated Man, Fire, Gypsy, Hawk, Ice, Nemesis, Obsidian, The Ray, Red Tornado, Shining Knight, Supergirl, Steel, and Starman. Nice. I also loved, real quick, when they're fighting the Lava Men and Batman goes, can you make telepathic content and a contact? And Aquaman goes, do these look like fish to you? Oh my God, I love it. You know, one of my favorite, like one of the funniest cameos, like uh, is like a few episodes ago when Orion was just zooming in on his chair. It's like, did you just like call from Apocalypse and he boom tubed him for this? this yeah, moment? actually, it was last episode, the return when he's there when the Amazo android is showing up. Like, that's just really weird that Orion is there just randomly. It's like, that guy's kind of hard to contact. He's usually on New Genesis. I think he was in the very first episode of Unl- L- L- Unlimited in that little shot that has like all the different leaguers. So I guess he joined. Yeah, but even then, I just don't really see him hanging around Earth full time. He was partially on there in the Grant Morrison JLA run. Him and Barda were, uh, and I believe Mister Miracle were on the Justice League. But yeah, exactly. I can't release because he he's more of the New Gods like area of DC. Yeah. So maybe, maybe he's just mm-hmm. taking a stint on Earth and he's gonna you know, work with the Justice League or something. Who knows? Mm-hmm. And by the way, Gray DeLuise voices Downpour and Sh- Shifter. Yeah, I could, like, I, as I was going through the voice, like, I could kind of hear her voice, and she was like, she did a, like, it kind of, it kind of felt, it sounded like, because, um, fun fact, when you hear a young boy in a cartoon that's usually a woman, it, it kind of sounded like a woman was trying to do a man's voice, but, like, a little bit older. Yeah. A hundred percent. Yeah, because I noticed, I figured that because the brother and sister sounded exactly the same. So I was like, okay, you probably just had to play both roles, which is fine. I'm like, she which, did a good um, job. Fun fact, there's actually a very practical reason why women do the young boys roles. Because guys, our voice gets deeper when we hit puberty. Yeah, so So like young boys have a higher pitch voice that like, of us, you know, adult men can't really hit, but the women can hit those higher pitches of the young boy. So, I feel like it's more of a physical thing than anything else. So, on that note, I think it's a good place to to, to wrap this one up. So, Nick, how do you rate this episode out of ten? I give it a eight point five out of ten. And why is that? It's above average solid. Like, um, I enjoyed it. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, didn't really break too much ground, but it was a good episode. Yeah, me too. I like it. I give it about a nine out of ten because I uh, first mm-hmm. off, I, I like the lineup. I like how it's clearly a, 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 it's a, it's. A, 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 I took it as kind of like a, a reference to Image, but it's also a reference to like the Super Friends, which I like that. That's cool because I like it w- w- when DC at least acknowledges its l- legacy because I feel like since. Since the whole Snyder Cut debacle, DC has been trying to like it, it has been like trying to ignore that part of it, and I'm like, no, you can't do that. So, n- not to get on on, on a Snyder thing, I, I just had to make sure I put in my obligatory um, Zack Snyder reference. But, Thank you. <laughs> yes, there you go. But yeah, so it, it's a fun episode, well animated, well everything good. But before we log off. I just wanted to list off all the characters that Jennifer Hale voices in the DCAU for fun. Giganta, Killer Frost, Female Vacationer from Superman, Star Lab Scientist, Jepsil Lynx, I I guess it's Mixie's wife, Jesse from, looks like BTAS, Elaine Grasso, Gloria, Gloria Buenaventura, Dora Smithy, Caroline Greenway, Selma Reesdale, 
Black Siren from the episode with the guardsmen, Soroya Bashir, Inza, Zatanna, and Bernadette of the Female Furies. I think it would be easier to list off the characters she doesn't voice. Which is pretty much like, yeah. But let's see who Gray Deloise voices. It's not as much, but you might as well go for it. It's Servant Girl n- number two on Apocalypse. Dominic De La Flores. Andre, uh, Andrea Donoso. Darlene Downpour and Shifter. So, yeah, they're awesome. And they play fantastic characters. And I, again, I, what I love about... I kind of consider Jennifer Hale like the Forrest Gump of animation because she's like in practically everything. It's like the way I normally take Jennifer Hale is that it doesn't matter what you're watching that's animated. Eventually, give it time, you will hear her voice. It's it's like it's like that SpongeBob meme. So I'll take an animated series. I'll have the the male lead voice by Nolan North. And the female lead voice by Jennifer Hale. Feeling daring today, aren't we? Like, by the way, I'm making that meme for you. Mm -hmm. By the way, Nick, let me ask you this. Because you brought up uh, my... uh, uh, Because you asked this question to me. Who would Jennifer Hale and Gray Deloise and I'll I'll add in Laura Bailey play uh, of your IP characters? Well, I know that I I would want Screecher to be voiced by Lacey Charbet. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, you know what I'm talking about, right? Mm-mm. Uh, but I could see Laura Bailey voicing Screecher. Mm, no, it's too too mature. Because remember, okay, because uh, like I don't know. Um, how about uh, Tyler from Twenty One Hundred Samurai? <sighs> yeah, I, I could I could see that. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> but like um but yeah I, i'm sorry i need to put more thought into this mm-hmm. and i would say i would have laura bailey if i if i had to put her into the screecher verse yes i'm call- i'm sorry into the athena verse uh I, I got a little confused there is she would probably play she could honestly uh, do Athena as well. It, it, um, she she could one hundred percent do it. Uh, and by the way, she does voice a fantastic Wonder Woman in the Justice League Ruby crossover part two. But anyway, enough of that. So, and, and Nick, where can we find you? And what have you got coming out on your channel? All right, so uh, so coming out on uh, Tuesday. So on Monday, we're releasing Avatar. On Tuesday, on Wednesday, we'll be dropping. Uh, Justice League versus Power Rangers, a review for Comics Watch. Friday, we got the Friday Night Frenzy. It'll be this will be uh, Jared's week on, so be sure to uh, do something really ex- extra special. And then on Saturday, we will be returning to Arkham for all that juicy goodness. Ba-ba-ban. And we can see uh, and, and Nick trying to pancake Batman, and that's that's a reference to you, Teladia. But um, in terms of me. Under two capes, we could honestly just do what uh, I'll tell you what. Under two capes, I'm making the determination this week is going to be analyzing the Superman Clark Kent disguise and why it works, why it doesn't work, and we'll, we'll basically do a deep dive into that. So th- that'll be fun. Movie night, we're talking about the death of Superman. Basically, for this month, we're going to do. Death of Superman, Reign of the Superman, maybe Batman Hush, and um, and uh, a D- Dark Apocalypse War, and just end the the the, the DC AMU. Then I have to decide w- w- what film series I want to make my next picks. Jared, mm-hmm. I just tagged you in a post on Twitter. Let me check that out. Nice. Okay, there you go. But um, so honestly, the, the way I was th- thinking we could do it, I could do like King Arthur movies or or what I could do is we could just cover 
see, I don't want to cover any more DC animated movies. I want to like take a break from that because we've been like going crazy on that. But I mean, at some point, we do need to do the MCU. At some point, that is a at, that is definitely something we need to. do. Let's do point. that when we get closer to Secret Wars coming out. Okay, that's um, my plan. So anyway, let's just I, I say once we get get well, like clear like Taladia's and you know mm-hmm. obligations. I, I personally think we should just maybe for a few months just do favorites, you know, or something. That's a good idea. Just do like r- random stuff. Yeah, exactly. That's a good idea. Like so, just, just rotate. Just do at least two to three rounds of each person gets a pick and we do movie night, you know, kind of thing. That works. That works. I, I like that. So we'll we'll f- figure that out and then get get back to all of you. Indie Wednesday. I'm talking about another amalgam comic. I'm gonna pick one out and we'll talk about it. And Super Wonder Legacy, Britt and I are going to talk about, I believe we are discussing either the children of Superman and Wonder Woman, like all the different kids they have had, or we are going to discuss other stuff, but I'll announce that as we get closer. So anyway, stay at work, everyone, and we'll be sure to see you in the next episode. Thanks. (laughs) 